Kilkenny Castle has a long and varied history. Each generation of inhabitants have left their physical mark on the imposing structure. Evidence of these changes can be seen from the outside of the castle and marked the transition from a defensive castle to a comfortable family residence. Today we are going to bring you around the castle's exterior and point out some of the architectural features that marked the development of the castle over the ages and its eventual transition to what we can see before us today. We start our tour at the South Tower, one of the original three remaining medieval towers. Old records refer to this tower as the White Tower, as traces of old whitewash remained on the tower for hundreds of years. Looking at the stonework on the South Tower, we can see that it is rough and uneven. This is typical of medieval construction, with the stone being from the black quarry nearby and as common local limestone. If we look towards the base of the tower, we can see the original medieval arrow loop windows. The stone around them is unusual. It is a Dundry stone and was imported from England for the construction of the castle. This more yellow type stone can be seen in friars, abbeys and castles all over Ireland and is very typical of Norman construction from the 12th to 13th century. The arrow loop windows are splayed on the inside which will give the archer a better and wider field of fire and leaving slightly more light. Light was always an issue in these old towers. As we look up the face of the south tower, we can see some of the arrow loop windows have been blocked up while other windows were opened out later to let in more light. The medieval towers of Kilkenny Castle were heightened in the 19th century with the battlements on the top dating from that period and are there to keep the castle looking for effect. Before we leave the south tower, we can see two faces either side of this doorway. These are termed label stops and there are several scattered around the castle. Each is different. One theory is that they represent notable figures throughout the long Butler family history. As we move along the eastern side of the courtyard, we can see the type of stone changing. This is more modern cut ashlar stone dating from again from the 19th century. Here at the arch we can see a frieze dedicated to the family, with the bunch of grapes signifying the family's connection to the wine industry. As a reward for their service to the king, they are allowed prisage rights, prisage being a tax they could levy on the wine trade in Ireland. Passing under the arch, we can see above us the Butler family coat of arms with their family motto, Come de Trove, meaning as I find it. Looking across from the arch, we can see what is today known as the Kilkenny Design Centre, built in the 1780s as a coach house and stables for the castle. Visiting dignitaries and nobility will come under the arch in their coach, alight from their coach in front of the castle. The coaches then would wait across the road. And when the Lord or Lady was ready to leave, a servant would run across to what is now the design centre and send word for the carriage to come across and wait again at the front door to pick up their, their dignitary to bring them back to their own way. In the 1990s, the Office of Public Works uncovered a previously filled in moat to reveal some of the medieval features of the castle. Looking down into the castle moat, we can see, firstly, a garderobe. Garderobe is basically a type of medieval toilet. It's a chute that runs all through the wall, all the way from the top floor down to the bottom, with openings on different levels. Garderobes came in two types, a long drop and a short drop um, garderobe. Long drop garderobe extended all the way to the base of the castle, but fell out of favour amongst castle builders, as several castles were captured by brave young knights climbing up the garderobe, to open the gates for attackers. Not a very pleasant task to be faced with. The next little entrance we see in the castle wall is a sally port. Salé from the old French to leave or to go out. A sally port is a secure way in or out of a castle that would only be used in times of emergency or warfare. But the use of sally ports was quite dangerous. Many a castle in medieval times was captured by a young knights rushing out of sally port to attack the enemy and not being quite quick enough to get back in and secure the entranceway behind them. Looking at the wall we can see it slopes out the way. It's not a perfectly perpendicular wall. This feature is known as a talus 
and serves several purposes. The slope of the talus keeps attackers away from the wall and makes siege towers and ladders more difficult to use. And secondly, more of the attackers are exposed and vulnerable to attack from the defenders above. Either side of the gate we can see these niches that look like they are built to house statues, but no record of statues standing in these positions exists. Passing back into the courtyard of the castle, we see an unusual set of windows on the left hand side. As easy to see from the brickwork, they have been altered to give a more ecclesiastical look. This room was used as the family's private chapel and later a records or monuments room. Looking at the south side of the castle, it is easy to see the focus is directed towards the parkland. All the windows point that direction. The windows at the bottom are larger than the top. This is a common architectural technique to increase the impression of height. To the right of the door, we have a mounting block used by the family to mount horses. On either side of the door, we see the Ormond crest. As we walk along the west side of the courtyard, we are passing outside the exterior of the long gallery or the picture gallery of Kilkenny Castle. Top of the wall here marks the original level of the gallery roof which was replaced in the 1860s by a pitched roof. The buttress is rather at that stage to help support the weight of the roof. The buttress on the opposite side of the courtyard are just there for symmetry. Passing around the back of the gallery we can see what appears to be blocked up windows. It would appear that these windows were in fact never opened. Walking towards the rose garden we see an oriel window surrounded with obviously repaired brickwork. This is where the 10th Earl, Black Tom, had his, had his picture gallery and the site of his famous picture window. To have a large glass window in the early 17th century was a real status symbol and a symbol and a sign of wealth. Moving around to the Rose Garden, we can see an original medieval wall which has large cosmetic features added to it, such as the balcony for aesthetic purposes. It is here on the steps of the Rose Garden Terrace that we conclude our outdoor tour of Kilkenny Castle as we look towards the beautiful rose garden laid out in the pattern of a Celtic cross. Mm -hmm.